Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Rachel Williams begins now. And employees at Hobart's Nearstar site were evacuated in the early hours of this morning, with some taken to hospital for smoke inhalation after a fire broke out in the cell house just after midnight. Crews maintained presence overnight just to ensure that there were no smaller pockets of fire that needed to be extinguished. Investigations have found the fire was caused by an electrical issue. Nearstar says the impact to production is not expected to be significant. Meanwhile, residents at a Berrydale home have had a lucky escape this afternoon after a blaze broke out at around 3 o'clock. Multiple fire crews rushed to the scene following reports smoke was coming from the roof cavity. The fire has since been deemed accidental and started from residents conducting renovations. The estimated damage is $50,000. A Tasmanian man has described his anguish at having to fork out thousands of dollars under the robo-debt scheme. Welfare groups have welcomed news that payments will be refunded but are demanding the federal government apologise. At the start of 2019, Brodie Lucas received a Centrelink letter, then another and another. I got about six of them all up and, yeah, it's telling me that I had almost $16,000 debt. He was among more than 370,000 Australians being chased for robo-debt payments. The part-time nurse had just bought a home when the government grabbed all three and a half thousand dollars of his tax return. It was very scary, like, to not know whether I was going to be able to pay bills because of this debt. Robo-debt refunds are now on the way. Welfare groups say thousands of Tasmanians have been caught up in the scheme. They say repayments should come with remorse. The waiving of robo-debts really confirms that this system was deeply flawed and in fact illegal. It is time for the government to act now, to apologise to the people affected. Brody was also among those who joined a class action lawsuit. His anxiety is gone, but his questions remain. I just don't understand how they thought that this was going to work. Um, and how this is going to be OK and everyone will be fine with it. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Visitors will be allowed back in Tasmanian hospitals as the government lifts more coronavirus restrictions. From Monday, most patients will be able to see up to one visitor between the hours of 2 and 6pm. Any visitor that comes to any of our hospitals will need to be screened and we need to make sure that anybody who has any signs of illness at all does not come and visit their loved ones. We still need to be cautious and we still need to um, monitor and manage those restrictions that are in place. Exemptions will still apply under compassionate circumstances. As restrictions start to ease even further, Tasmanians are desperate to leave their places of lockdown, no more so evident than today around Mount Wellington. Thousands taking to the tracks, a place that for many right now is a rare place of solace. A pristine day and every man and his dogs out to embrace it. Good because I can like smell the nature and see the nature. Wellington Park, a peaceful place after months of ongoing uncertainty. After being stuck indoors for a couple of months, uh, there's some pressure on people. Uh, they just want to break out and, uh, and go walking. It's been very hard for me because I've just had to stare at a screen all day and I get very tired of it. The parking situation to be desired, but it's worth it. It's been really good to get out and about instead of staying at home. Seeing everyone, uh, everyone OK and good and playing finally. The area, one of the natural spaces open and accessible for those living within the 30 kilometre restriction radius. We've been going outside a lot and walking and enjoying the outdoors, probably more than before, I think. Having this is my big backyard makes life a bit easier. Launceston Gorge much quieter but some still taking the opportunity to enjoy some fresh air. Signs plastered everywhere from gates to fences in public areas now just part of the environment. 
It is important though to still try and be careful. If you see a crowd, see if you can take another route or perhaps just be careful about your interaction with others. For many, being outside will never again be taken for granted. But in many ways, nothing's changed. There's only so much you can do to keep a toddler entertained. What did we do today? Nothing. Did we... Louise Hoover, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian football legend John Leadham has died. The left footer, born in Campbelltown, he played for North Launceston and North Hobart, winning three state premierships along the way. He was also poached by Melbourne before a knee injury prevented him from playing in the VFL. Leadham went on to represent Tasmania at multiple interstate carnivals and was named vice-captain in the Tasmanian Football Team of the Century. He was 92. Tasmanian small business owners are calling on the state government to extend its hardship grant scheme as they continue to struggle financially due to the pandemic. One local business owner is taking a stand, saying the multi-million dollar scheme isn't enough to keep struggling businesses afloat. Empty kennels, abandoned toys and only the owner's dogs in the yard. It's a rare sight at Margate Country Kennels, who specialise in short-term stays for travelling pet owners. Business owner Amanda Jessup had her busiest month ever in February, with wait lists for upcoming months. Then coronavirus hit and travel restrictions came into play. It's just been a steamroll effect of, you know, no bookings. Um, it's just devastating, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking in the end to know that you lose everything overnight due to, you know, this virus. With maintenance work needing to be undertaken and staff members to pay, Amanda applied for a hardship grant to aid in her business's survival. She claimed she was told she ticked the boxes for a $15,000 helping hand. She was devastated when she was knocked back, instead given a lesser amount. They've been eligible to apply, but they've been given no good reason about why they haven't received uh, the kind of support that the government has promised. Now, all businesses in Tasmania are asking to be treated fairly and equally across industries. That's all that we want. We just need a survival emergency payment. We shouldn't have to go to the banks and apply for loans where we're going to be paying interest in, you know, five months. We don't know if we're going to have an income to pay those. The government says it remains committed to supporting businesses during the pandemic, providing more than $60 million in emergency funding to over 18,000 businesses across the state. I know this is a really tough time for many small businesses across Tasmania. The restrictions have placed unprecedented pressure on them and I would like to assure businesses that we're continuing to advocate federally for you. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. The RACT is calling on the state government to include the proposed River Derwent Ferry in its COVID-19 infrastructure recovery package in Parliament next week. The peak motoring body says there is strong support for the project, with a Facebook poll last week showing 86% of respondents support the idea, which it hopes will reduce traffic congestion in the area. In a statement, the government says it recognises community interest in the proposal and is considering how best to proceed with the project. They live with a debilitating illness, but isolation is emerging as a major threat to those suffering multiple sclerosis. Campaigners are using this year's MS Day to highlight the importance of keeping connected during the COVID crisis. Dennis Saltmarsh was diagnosed in 2002, but has lived with symptoms since the 1980s. It's important for people to be, be able to keep, keep in touch with each other. And just uh, because, well, loneliness, it's, it's a significant issue with MS. Tasmania has the highest prevalence of MS in Australia. A Launceston dancing instructor is raising his feet after raising thousands. Andrew Palmer undertook a punishing 24 hours on the dance floor doing the cha-cha. So far, more than $37,000 has been raised for mental health and welfare charities. The dancing identity followed the bruising effort with an ice bath before heading to bed. The North Launceston Football Club has denied its involvement in a COVID-19 breach. 
On Wednesday, the Launceston City Council confirmed to Seven Tasmania it was aware of a sports club that resumed training without the required COVID-19 plans in place and that the matter had been addressed with the club involved. Seven Tasmania understands Bombers players were seen training at Youngtown Oval and when questioned, North Launceston President Thane Brady said its players had not resumed structured training when the breach occurred. Brady also says it's had no conversations with the council and if the council had raised an issue with him, he would have fronted up to deal with it. Good evening everyone. Hobart, the state's top today, reaching 18 degrees, 16 in Launceston and Devonport and Burnie, 15. Around the state, Flinders Island and Friendly Beaches also reaching 18 degrees, 17 in St Helens, Grove, Ouse and Strawn, and Smithton, Low Head and King Island all 16 degrees. Low cloud covered much of the north today with thinner, wispy high cloud above. Further out, middle cloud extends across South Australia to the southwest of Tasmania ahead of a cold front crossing the bight. Cold, unstable cloud follows the front, pushing over southwest Western Australia. Tomorrow's chart shows a weakening front that will cross Tasmania with another front to approach from the west. A high remains over the Tasman Sea with another high to the west of Western Australia. North to northwesterly winds 20 to 30 knots tomorrow, reaching 35 to 45 knots in the west and upper east before dawn. A gale warning is current from southeast Cape to Stanley for northerly winds, and a gale warning is also current from St Helens Point to Wineglass Bay for northwesterly winds. There is a strong wind warning current for the southwest lakes, the Central Plateau Lakes, and Storm Bay, and a strong wind warning is also current for the remaining Tasmanian coastal waters. Hobart 15 tomorrow, 16 in Richmond, Ouse 14. Launceston and Devonport showers easing and 14, a top of 11 in Deloraine. 14 in Burnie and Strawn, Curry reaching 15, and in the east St Helens a top of 15 and 16 in Swansea and Whitemark. Looking on to Monday now, showers about the north, west and far south, mainly fine elsewhere. Showers about the west, far south and Bass Strait Islands on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, showers about the west, far south and the southeast coast. Showers in Perth and Adelaide tomorrow, Melbourne 17, 15 in Canberra and partly cloudy in Sydney and Brisbane. And Hobart currently 14 and mostly cloudy, Launceston mostly clear and 13 and 14 and partly cloudy in Devonport and Rach that Saturday night's weather. Lovely, thank you very much for that Chelsea. Well that's all your news for now, thanks for joining us, good night.